You're about to watch two liquid streams collide in midair. What looks like one continuous collision is actually hundreds of individual collisions per second, and each collision creates a soft but solid microscopic sphere in midair that researchers can stack up to build macroscopic 3D structures. Researchers also loaded the liquid streams with living cells to show that this technique could be useful for 3D printing materials that behave like living tissue. But back when Klaus Willem Visser started this project at the University of Twente, he didn't think that crossing the streams would work for bioprinting. At first, the method just produced a random hydrogel mess. But then Visser had a liquid revelation. Then I thought, okay, this is not gonna work, we're stuck. Um, let's, let's like think about it a little bit more, but probably this project will have to end. And then next day I was literally taking a shower and I thought, what if we can use surface tension? It might be possible to make them like flow around one another. And, it, it, and then I tried the next day and it just worked. To understand where surface tension comes in, let's take a closer look at the process. It starts with two nozzles firing two different liquids at each other. One nozzle sprays a continuous jet full of alginate, a carbohydrate made by brown algae. Another nozzle launches discrete droplets of calcium chloride solution. The liquids have different surface tensions and thus they prefer to stay separate. The lower surface tension alginate liquid envelops the calcium chloride droplet, and this merger also allows calcium ions to start crosslinking the polysaccharide, creating a soft alginate shell around the droplet's interior. All of this happens in a matter of milliseconds, before the droplets even hit the printing platform. And this helps make the process a high-throughput alternative to other bioprinting methods that squeeze viscous liquids through nozzles, Visser says. To increase the speed in those methods, you have to increase the pressure on the liquid, which can kill cells. Now launching cells into a printing platform would also kill them, but remember, the mid-air liquid collision provides protection for the cells before they land. Uh, by the time that happens, the cells are already in their like safety capsule. Ibrahim Ozbalat, a bioprinting expert at Penn State University, tells us that other researchers have been developing this approach of combining two liquid streams for a while. For example, researchers at the University of Florida printed a hydrogel by having two liquids meet right at the printing platform last year. But Visser and his colleagues' approach is remarkable for the in-air encapsulation, Ozbalat says. However, he's not sure how it would perform for bioprinting materials that aren't alginate. The jet is encapsulated by the cross-linker material and it happens in air, which is really cool. Unfortunately, you can't really use other materials that are widely used in bioprinting processes for this type of setup. Visser says there is flexibility to explore with the things his team can already print, but he does acknowledge that the current materials portfolio is limited. Expanding the material palette is, is um, it's really a material science business. So this is where chemistry plays a big role. We need chemistry to further develop this platform towards new materials and functions.